Thank you. I'm going to recognize myself, and then we'll go to Mr. Comer. Um, let's let's talk about that relationship with the OSC. What what do you um, what do you believe is your legal obligation to provide documents to the OSC, to the OSC? What is your legal obligation? So we have a legal obligation to to provide documents to OSC. I find that curious because who is uh, Francine Kerner? She's uh, uh, Chief Counsel at TSA. And uh, how long has she been in that role? So uh, I do believe Ms. Kerner's been there since the start of TSA. So she was, quote, this is a quote, this is February 21st okay, of this year. Here's what her quote was when she visited with us. TSA has no legal obligation to turn over documents to OSC, end quote. How is it that she says there's no legal obligation, and you give this committee a, a letter yesterday that says, quote, TSA recognizes its legal obligation to provide documents to the Office of Special Counsel and does so regularly, end quote. How do you rectify that? So I, I was not in the meeting uh, in which uh, Ms. Kern is alleged to have said that. Uh, it is my understanding that she was uh, uh, using that phrase in, in context to the attorney-client uh, privilege redactions, not in the generality. Not in the generality. No legal obligation. You say there is a legal obligation. Well, how would you describe your relationship with the OSC? My personal relationship with the OSC has only just begun, and I, I can promise you that I will extend to Ms. Lerner uh, uh, an arm of partnership to make it so that they, if there are differences, they can be resolved. And how would you, that's your personal one, how would you describe the overall TSA relationship with the OSC? So it is my understanding that lawyer to lawyer, they do have a very good working relationship. At least that is uh, uh, certainly our side, of, uh, our side of it. My lawyers have never said that they've had any, any issue working with OSC. Who is uh, Steve Colon? Uh, I do believe Steve Colon is presently acting uh, uh, in, in a different capacity, but he used to be in uh, the Office of Chief Counsel. He was the Assistant Chief Counsel under Francine Kerner, correct? Yes. And he was detailed to head, the, and this is what's absolutely stunning, he was detailed to head the TSA Office of Professional Responsibility, correct? Yes, sir. Let me put up an email that he wrote. I'll read this to you. Jeff, if you can join us, I'd appreciate it. Sorry. I'm done being conciliatory with the OSC. They have been a nightmare to deal with for the employment advice folks. If they want war, they got one, unless the evidence stinks. You can go ahead and put that down. Does that sound like a responsive TSA to the OSC? No, sir, it does not. Did you fire them? Oh, no, sir. Are you going to fire his butt? No, sir. I wouldn't. I'd fire that guy. And you know what? Until you clean house with the legal folks in your agency, you're going to have a lot of problems. That is not the kind of attitude. We're going to go to war with the OSC? You're familiar with the law? You're familiar with the, the code that comes out of the OPM regulations? You can tell me it's all rosy. But when your chief legal counsel, who's been there since the inception, has saying there's no legal obligation, she is not abiding by the law. Mr. Chaffetz, please let me leave you with no uh, doubt to the matter. That is unacceptable. Then what are you going to do about it? He, will, he, he has, I do believe, already been disciplined, but we will look into it. And you're going to tell us what that discipline is? Yes. Please understand, sir, that the uh, uh, counselors that work for us also report through the department, so I have to work this out with the department. And you know what? You talked about the culture. We get culture reports, and DHS routinely is at the bottom of the heap. I mean, they, they take the 320 agencies out there, and guess who's at the bottom of the bottom? Homeland Security. TSA. Secret Service, we deal with it, but there, there's a common denominator, okay? The common denominator is Homeland Security. In order to enrich the culture, you have to have confidence that when something goes awry, there is a fair and honest hearing of that information. And if you have a whistleblower who believes they've been retaliated against, we need a fair arbiter to come in and look at 
the facts, all of the facts. You're not providing those facts to the OSC. And every employee knows it. They know the deck is stacked against them, and they don't get a fair reading. And you know what? If you want to change that culture, people have to be confident that whether you're at the top of the food chain or the new employee who's just going to work at the TSA, if something goes awry, you're going to get a fair hearing. Doesn't mean we presuppose the conclusion, but when the OSC, the fair independent arbiter here, doesn't get all the information, guess what? They can, you can't look anybody in the eye and tell them that they had their case heard out. Of all those things I just said, what would you disagree with? So I would not disagree with you that uh, a fair and uh, robust uh, investigation into a person's allegations should be conducted. Just as the whistleblowers have rights, the allegations are made against another employee, and they have rights too. So the due process must go through. We must follow through on the process. I agree with you on that. Ms. Lerner, your perspective on that? Um, you know, when we talk about changing the culture, uh, there are a lot of things that an agency can do. But, you know, by, by cooperating with OSC, by providing these documents, that could really help. Um, you know, I think that there's just some misinformation that may be going on, and we can hopefully clear that up. But, um, you know, whistleblower protections are key. Other things could help, too. I think the full protections of Title V applying to TSA would be very helpful so that there's a more of a feeling of fairness uh, in employment action so that hiring decisions and promotion decisions are perceived as fair, but um, I think first okay, place so to start is where the protections already lie is with. I want to I want to recognize Mr. Comer, but I got to go through this. In fact, I'll, let me do that, and then go through this list of things that I need you all to provide. Let's uh, yield back and let's now recognize Mr. Comer of Kentucky. 